third annual Doxner Awards. It's this podcast's biggest night next to Docmas and a couple of other things. Uh, welcome. Welcome. We're rounding out the year that was uh, with this is the f- fan voting. You voted. Our patrons on the Doxcord made the nominees you as a fan base voted and we are here to celebrate the best in comics movies tv and of course me and richard uh so uh without further ado i'd like to introduce obviously i'm dr dc i'd like to introduce the architect behind the doxners our very own marvelous ryan ryan pigeon oh don't call me an architect good lord now i'm gonna Think of the Matrix the whole night, and that's not good for anyone. Yeah, now you need to use words like concordantly and vis-a-vis and things like that. Uh, no, I was always more of a Merovingian because, you know, it's fun to curse in French, I guess. That's true. It's like wiping your ass with silk. Uh, Ryan, <laughs> this is year three of the Doxners. Congratulations on another uh, another voting season well uh, well managed. Uh, well managed is a bit strong this year. Um, slacked a bit, but we got it done in the end. And you know what? Looks beautiful. <laughs> Here, here's the thing. I feel like it was w- way more efficient. You know, I think there was like some more careful deliberation and and stuff to get the the nominees down to you know to five a category or things like that. But I feel like the voting went great this year. It was. Uh, I, I think there's a lot of buzz out there. Uh, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we won a daytime Emmy for best awards show. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's that's coming down the pike. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, gotta be ready for it. Um, yeah, it it went good once I got off my lazy ass and actually did it. Um, that was the biggest problem. Was waiting to do it as long as I did. But it did go smoother. We used a Google Doc, as referenced by Richard in a previous episode. <laughs> yes, I enjoyed our process. So, yeah, for anyone who's tuning in who hasn't listened to the Doxners before, I'll just go kind of over the, the basics. So, as I mentioned before, our uh, patrons on the Doc scored part of their uh, kind of perk slash job every year is to nominate uh, to put together the long list of nominees um, for each of our Doxners categories. And uh, and then Ryan and I are the, the quote, uh, steering committee that takes those nominees. Whichever ones have the most votes, they're in as the short list. And then we kind of narrow down from there to get down to maximum of five per category. And, and then publicly the votes go out and anyone can vote there's a couple of categories that aren't public ones but it's for things that aren't public anyway like patreon episodes and stuff about the podcast but uh but yeah but so it's a great kind of summation of the year we bring all these different parts of the listenership and stuff together of our big dr dc uh family uh to celebrate mostly comics but movies tv the show itself, all you know, actors, all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, I think I think there's a good crop of a good crop of nominees this year. How are you feeling about the the field this year? Um, I feel kind of great about the field this year. Um, even though this is comic book podcast, the, my first thought immediately actually goes to the movies this year. Right, and the movies have been great this year. The comic books, though, have also been great. Um, all our categories are full just about except for one or two which is a first i think i think in past years some of the categories have only had three instead of five so we've got full categories which is awesome uh comics are great for the most part you know i might complain about a few of them as we go through the episode (laughs) 
it wouldn't be the Doxners if we weren't bitching as we went. So, uh, without further ado, shall we get shall we get into this, Ryan? I think that is a wonderful idea. Terrific. So, as normal, we have um, a bunch of categories. I didn't count the number this year. I did last year. So, if you want to hear how many there are, just listen to last year, I guess. Listen to all the years. They're great. Um, but we start with our media, like movies, TVs, that kind of stuff. Awesome. I guess comics are also media. Comics are the second biggest chunk of the th show and then of course the podcast and the doc scored will be the ending because you gotta end strong that's right and what's stronger than the sh our show oh god oh no <laughs> you know two, how, how many year canadian podcast winner two <laughs> well two so far but wait, wait uh -huh. waiting on waiting on this year's awards which i'm sure are locked in oh yeah i'm sure <laughs> Um, so, and I thought yeah. our award show was interesting. At least we come out regularly. <laughs> Boom. Roasted. But also, I don't endorse what was just said. Just in, case the, <laughs> just in case the results aren't locked in. So, careful with that. But I agree. But also, hey now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, let's get into it since we have a lot of categories to go through, folks. Let's go. Uh, we will start off with the best trailer of 2023. Best trailer. Um, normally, I mention what trailer we're talking about when I do this. Like, So, for example, one of the nominations is the Barbie trailer. And in my mind, when the Barbie trailer was nominated, it's that teaser trailer. That's the parody of 2001. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this year I didn't do that. I just put the movie names. So that's oh totally well. fine. I think. I think anyone that wants to go and see what the crop of trailers uh, were like, you, they they could go do that. I I think. Yeah. I also feel like, at least from my perspective this year, trailers were a lot different than they had been in past years. Like I feel like we weren't getting trailers for things until really close to they. Like, the movies were coming out, and then they would just drop, like, a new trailer once a week, and then the movie would be out, as opposed to, like, you'd get a trailer a year out or something. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if that's just, if that's wrong, and that's just my perception of it, but, I like, this year I was like, did we get no trailers, and then they would just dump, like, three trailers, like, in a couple of weeks leading up to movies? Well, especially for something like the Marvels, that is especially true for yeah. where that movie got like no marketing until like the final three months. And then it was like, here's four trailers, including one that comes out the week the movie comes out. Yeah, yeah. Kind of crazy, actually, when you think. About and I it. think the Aquaman 2 trailer came out within 100 days of yeah, the movie. Totally. Which that baby going to die, though. Just that baby going to die. Listen, I, I don't want. I don't want to wade into to too touchy a subject here, but if the baby doesn't die, I'm walking out. All right, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe the Aquaman trailer will be in next year's, even though it came out this year and it was That's not right. nominated. Right. But what was nominated was the Killers of the Flower Moon trailer. Okay. The Flash trailer. Mm. Renfield. Better trailer than a movie. Ahsoka and the Barbie trailer, as previously mentioned. Of course. Uh but before we before we open the envelope and, and, and see who won here, um I I just want to mention right off the top that like you threw in your little editorial th that you think Renfield's a better trailer than a movie, which I don't agree with, but that's fine. But <laughs> uh but another like better trailer than movie is the flash you know i mean oh yeah and i'm saying that as someone who more or less liked the flash uh i, I can the, fully the, say i liked the, the flash. trailer was like it's incredible the, for a movie that i was like i will never see this movie you know it was stuck in hell forever it had all these kind of components that made me dislike it or whatever and then that trailer came out and like the first thing that i said was like ah shit i'm seeing this movie <laughs> that trailer was crazy and I really, really um, liked it. it. It was a strong one. We knew Michael Keaton was obviously in the movie, but I had no idea that Zod was going to show up and like be a prominent character, and they just drop him in the trailer. You're like, they got fucking Michael Shannon back? Sure, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it, pr so, pretty crazy trailer. So, 
let's oh, uh, it's great all these honestly all these trailers were great um that's why they're nominated i guess um you want to do that thing where we try to guess what we voted for if you don't remember <laughs> oh i don't i don't remember what i voted for but i'm i'm gonna throw out the it was probably barbie Okay, I think I definitely voted for Barbie. Like I said, that original 2001 A Space Odyssey trailer is yeah. a sight to behold, especially on the big screen before watching Avatar 2. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. Um, right. And with 38% of the vote, the Barbie trailer has taken the win. Hey, there you go, Barbie, first win of the night. I I I'm putting I'm putting money on multiple wins for Barbie tonight. Oh, interesting. Love Let's that. see if you're right then. Great, but not great right now. For Cause, Barbie. Because first we have to go through television. All right, Aha! hit me. Barbie is not. So the next category is the best television miniseries of 2023. That's right. I didn't watch as much TV this year as I did last year. No, and I mean, if anyone is on the Patreon and listened to the 2023 year in review, I I even forgot some of the TV I watched. Like, some great TV. Like, I forgot about the new season of I Think You Should Leave. I forgot about all sorts of stuff. Yeah, my, my TV know. viewing is definitely reduced, and also so is my memory. So, yeah, this was a slightly, yeah, well. a slightly tough one for me. And I, I'm definitely in the next category we do, which will be ongoing television. I'm going to mention a few things. But first, we have to get through miniseries. Oh, so, it. the best miniseries of 2023. We had Lessons in Chemistry. Good. The Fall of the House of Usher. Uh -huh. Boiling Point. Beef. And Ahsoka. All right. Uh, I'm going to try and remember what I voted for here. It probably ahsoka okay but i, I remember. think i skipped voting in this category because right. i don't think i watched any of these shows if i'm being honest to be honest neither have uh neither have uh oh no sorry i did see beef okay but i voted it, for I, but i voted for ahsoka because like a true academy member i love to just throw a vote <laughs> at a thing i didn't watch and uh and see what happens if I was to just blindly vote for something, I think I would have gone The Fall of the House of Usher because love Mike Flanagan, love Ed Edgar Allan Poe. I did it's like love two things I love coming I together. I did love that one Bruce Greenwood scene that was making the rounds, like the lemon monologue. Like uh, that, that, that's that's pretty solid. Yeah. But with forty five percent of the vote, Ahsoka has taken it, nerds. <laughs> Gulp. Oops. Anyway, uh... <laughs> yep. hey, nerds, look at this. You're voting for your Star Wars you over know, beef it... and stuff like that. <laughs> Listen, this is, this is like almost the opposite of the Academy Awards. We only ro <laughs> we will only reward the most popular things. Uh... <laughs> you know what? I've seen clips from Ahsoka and some of those flashback scenes are totally. blowing my mind without even seeing the show. The and yeah yeah totally and it like secured Filoni the feige spot in star wars so yeah still not sure how i feel about that if i'm being uh, honest i mean we're basically in the Filoni thing anyway yeah it's, it's yeah. more ceremonial than anything i think yeah i guess fair enough well Luckily, we get to talk about Star Wars again because we're moving on to best ongoing television show. That's right. Um, great shows. This is the category I want to mention. We definitely missed two really big ones. Yeah. <laughs> Just completely wasn't nominated. So I guess, you know, I guess we didn't miss it because fan nominated and all that stuff. But My Adventures with Superman, which mm -hmm. blew most people's minds when they saw it. And The Last of Us? Both came out this year. Wow, big snub for The Last of Us. Um, <laughs> yeah, my goodness. Yeah, my adventures with Superman. I've heard great things. I just haven't seen it yet, so I didn't nominate it. I was responsible in this category. I was oh. uh, <laughs> honest, honest and responsible in this one. Uh, but yeah, yeah, big, my adventures big with snub, Superman. Big snub for Last of Us. 
Yeah, I I completely forgot The Last of Us happened. I was listening to a different podcast, and they mentioned it, and I went, oh, my God, we forgot about The Last of Us. Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. Well, you know, these things happen. It's, uh, it's award <laughs> season, and uh, you really got to rub shoulders, and you got to pay off the right people. Definitely. Which is obviously so not, what, not what I do with the Canadian Podcast Awards. Of course, those are earned. That was all based on merit. Don't <laughs> investigate any further. Right. The nominees for Best Ongoing Television Show. <laughs> we have Loki, mm -hmm. The Bear, mm -hmm. Doom Patrol, Andor, and Star Trek Picard. Ooh, boy, oh boy. The, the nerds came out strong in this category. The nerds um, came out strong with a lot of good nominations. I'm positive that i voted for picard because that um that season crushed me it was so goddamn good and i cried the whole time <laughs> and it made me feel this, things this was the next gen reunion season yeah, basically it was the full next gen reunion is the finale of picard and they fi it finally gave them like we got like an old crew adventure out of them the way that we would get one with the Kirk uh, crew. Yeah, it, it was it was perfect. Uh, yeah, it made me wish that the first two seasons of Picard were also this. <laughs> well, speaking of crushing, I'm pretty sure I voted for Loki because if you haven't uh, seen season two yet, fuck. <laughs> yeah, that's on the list. I haven't gotten there yet, which uh, well then, which is I slightly, will not slightly mind it. blowing, but uh, but yeah, I I've I've heard. That it's kind of well. I mean, the way Richard described it, I thought was interesting. Where it, Richard's description of Loki season two was the first four whatever episodes are like, eh, and then the ending of it is like the best Marvel thing Marvel's ever done. Yeah, um, episode, and this was kind of true for the first season also, but episode six is just right. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm excited for you to finally watch it because I know you're gonna have to talk about it. Yeah, hundred percent. It'll it'll happen. I'll get there eventually. So, with forty two percent of the vote, the bear has taken this category. Whoa! Get fucked, nerds. The cooking <laughs> yeah. show wins. Wow! Yoked uh, Gene Wilder, aka Jeremy Allen White. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Yeah, interesting. Big, big show. I, I, I know Richard likes that one. Yeah, that. Wow, that's awesome, man. You, I guess I gotta you get around. You to nerds watching have it some now. taste, huh? Nice. I guess I have to get around to watching it now. Um, I love that. As if I didn't already. <laughs> love that. The bear, big upset win. Um, and you know, oh, how about this for a transition? And now to go to the movie category where. Mr. Jeremy Allen White might have a movie nominated next year because, well, I'm going to cry watching that movie. Um, I'd give that transition a 6 out of 10. <laughs> oh, I know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, couldn't find it. Uh, that would have been fun. I was like, oh, shit, did I delete that poll? No, it exists. I found it. All right, so best this is best movie. Yeah, this is gonna be best movie of twenty twenty three. Oh, okay, that has changed since the last time I looked at it. Cool, let's go. <laughs> All right, let's have it. So the best movie of twenty twenty three, we have Barbie, The Menu, Past Lives, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. And Spider Man across the Spider Verse. Pretty stacked category. Some Said it at the some, top of the episode. Great some, year some, for movies so far. Some, some big outings there. Surprised at some of the things that didn't make it. Uh, you know, su surprised Oppenheimer didn't make it. No uh, one nominated Oppenheimer. Yeah, wild. Big snub for Oppenheimer. Yeah, um,. You know, I'm kind of in the category of, wow, I can appreciate this filmmaking, but not really for me. Same yeah, with yeah. Pillars of the Flower Moon. Sure. Interesting. Okay, so 
Uh, I should mention, I should have mentioned it up top. People might be going like the menu. How did that make it in here? The Oscar, uh, the, the Doxner's uh, season is from November to October. So it's, it kind of crosses the year boundary slightly. So if you're wondering how the menu made it in there, it's because that was a, that was an early uh, Doxner's qualifying year uh, uh, entry. Yeah, and the reason we do it that way is so that you guys can have this episode at the end of the year instead of in March. <laughs> That's right. All right. So I think I voted for Barbie for this because I think Barbie is, might be like one of the 10 best movies ever made. Uh, oh, okay. And so I, I definitely voted Barbie in this category. Um, I voted for Guardians of the Galaxy 3 because that movie made me an emotional wreck. <laughs> Love that. Great reason to vote for something. Uh, but it's great. That movie's great. Um, and the winner with 30% of the vote, though, is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Whoa! Huge upset. And obviously a very, like, split category. Uh, yes. Wow. Um, very close between Spider-Man and Guardians. Whoa! Um, How about that? Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Uh, I love that movie. Uh, I, I like that movie i i uh, i know your opinion on that i just think you're wrong but uh it's half a movie it doesn't have a full story arc you can't call it a movie because it's not a full movie that's untrue the movie has a complete beginning middle and end it just has a cliffhanger there's a difference no there is Um, no third act there is uh, a first act and a second act there is no third act in this movie (laughs) <laughs> Untrue and uh, uh, light them up in the comments, everybody. Uh, <laughs> well, you can obviously tell this isn't biased, or that wouldn't have even made it because <laughs> I mean, not if, a full movie. If anything, this shows how honorable a uh, 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 Doxner's organizer you are. Uh, <laughs> so it's good to get that in there so people know that this is all above board. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, Across the Spider-Verse. Nice. Big win for that one. Uh, yeah, sort of surprised Barbie didn't uh, come out strong. You said it, it was between Spider-Verse and Guardians 3? Yeah, Barbie was in third place with four votes. Wow, so. way down the list. Crazy, crazy. All right, let's let's uh, let's keep it moving. Let's keep going. Let's keep going to Best Actor of 2023, the oh. final category of this section i'm will one day figure out how to pop properly distinguish without being like it's physical media or it's digital media and it's like brian you idiot that's both of them i just want you to know a i'm gonna keep all that in and b my favorite (laughs) my favorite thing is just to keep describing the process behind it love it (laughs) that's someone that listens to the podcast Wait, hold on. Hold on. Let me be surprised that it will all be in after last year's snafu where you're like in the middle of the episode and then kept in the episode. Hey, can you turn off your camera actually? (laughs) Just in the episode for all of time. Yeah, exactly. This is the show we don't edit. We all know this. (laughs) Um, So (laughs) final category of watching moving pictures is best actor of 2023 all right all right who do who do we have who are our nominees and the nominees greta lee diego luna nick cage anya taylor joy and margot robbie Another stacked category. Some really wild performances, big performances, really emotional performances. Uh, yeah, we're sort of covering all, all manner of genres and things in here, too, I think. Um, do you remember who you voted for in this category? Honestly, no. I <laughs> think... I think I voted for Anya Taylor-Joy because I really loved the menu. Um, okay. I think I voted for her, but I guess... We'll, I know it would have been we'll between see. Margot Robbie and Nick Cage for me. Right, sure. All right, so let's let's find out who took it then. So with 
56 percent of the votes and it wasn't even close margot robbie has won this category wow there you go vindication for the barbie movie margot robbie taking home the 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 iron i imagine the doxners are made of iron um steel yeah steel yeah that's right yeah damascus <laughs> then we... steel the finest well, Steel, because then we can reference the movie Steel with Shaquille O'Neal and be like, see, look, it fits. And that's like my goal, I'd say, like 60% of the time in life is to reference that right. movie. So, uh, you know, yeah, take it home, the Steel, Margot Robbie uh, for Barbie. Great performance. Amazing movie. Glad that it got some love, uh, some love in the kind of final yeah, um, winnings this year. That movie is awesome. And it's on HBO Max now for people who haven't seen it yet. As of like a day or two ago, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting a note from the uh, from the execs. It's actually just Max. You know what? That's true. We're gonna Sean Parker it. <laughs> drop the HBO. It's cleaner. Um, just, just thank God that Peacock won't drop the P. <laughs> I did see a thing. We're recording this on the day that the rumor or whatever came out that um, Warner Brothers Discovery and Paramount are in like potential merger talks. And I saw one comment that really made me laugh where they were like, obviously all of this corporate merger stuff is bad, but think about how funny it would be for the service to be named max plus. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's good. (laughs) All right. So let's move on to comics. We are theoretically a, a podcast about comic books. Uh, in theory, anyway, although lately we've been a podcast about cheese and milk. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, so let, let's get into the comments. We got we got a bunch of categories in here. Why don't you cue us up? Where, where are we starting? So we will start with the best manga slash manhwa from 2023. All right, um, a category that I am always on the outside of. I just never, <laughs> I've never had the balls to dive into like chapter one of three thousand of. The... <laughs> so, so um, I I'll say this after I read them. I, I'm just gonna read them first. Go um, for it. Again, if you guys don't remember from past years, I don't know how to pronounce names, so forgive me in advance. These are gonna be the hardest ones of the night. This is my favorite part of the show. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> The nominees, My Hero Academia by Kohi Horikashi. Okay. okay. Delicious in Dungeon by Ryoko Kwai. Sure. Dragon Ball Super by Akira Toriyama and Torotaro. Okay. Toyotaro. Witch Hat Altier by Kamomi Shara. Shiraham. Shiraham? Shiraham. And Rooster Fighter by Shu Sakuratini. Tani. Sakuratini. I don't know. I tried. I love you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, do, do you. Did you cast a vote in this category? I'll, I'll say I didn't because I, I don't. I don't know any of these. And and again, I was was very Um, honorable here. I did. And it just actually reminded me that the new chapter of this came out today, which is Dragon Ball Super, I believe, the new chapter. Um, For anyone who only watches the movies, right now they're actually going through the superhero movie that came out last year, and they're covering it in the manga. And today's chapter 100, actually, of it. And so it's going to... Who knows what's going to happen? I haven't read it yet, so probably going to read that when we finish here. But nice, right on. So, uh, so then, yeah. Let who who took it? Who's taken best uh, manga manhwa? So, with forty six percent of the vote, Dragon Ball Super has taken the win this year. Wow! There you go, Dragon Dragon Ball Dragon Ball Super. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know, man. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um again like i i kind of grew up watching dragon ball so now just to be reading it and stuff is kind of fun for me how would Something you like would you say that it like do you uh 
Because is this one that started as a manga and then was a cartoon? Did it start the other way around? Like, wh- does it translate better, like in print form, or or do you pr- still prefer like the the actual like cartoon or whatever? So I've really only read the super manga. I haven't read Z or the original. Right. Um, I do know like. It did start as a manga, and I know, like, all of them, the show has a bunch of filler because it outpaced the manga at certain points. So, it depends on just what you like, I guess. Fair (laughs) enough. Uh, The super manga's been very good so far, though. And, like I said, just hit chapter 100, so it's not that far into it compared to others. Looking at you, One Piece. Dragon Ball Super (laughs) taking the best manga, best manhwa category this year. So, moving on, we have the best comic book moment of 2023. Right. Specifically, I I think this category tends to be things that feel particularly comic book-y. It's different from a different category that we got, which is best reveal. Uh, Right. Right. But but uh, but best comic book moment tends to be something that really just feels like it sits in a like this only happens in comic books kind of uh, kind of place. So uh, who are our nominees for this one? So our nominees are Roy Harper being u- reunited with Leon Harper in Green Arrow one that's for that right. leading moment. <laughs> yeah, that's right. God bleeds. From Duo Powerbomb number seven. Black Adam shares his power with all the DC heroes from Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths number seven. Right. Batman falls from the freaking moon from <laughs> Batman 130. Amazing. And Lex Luthor kills Manchester Black to restore Superman's secret identity from Action Comics 1050. Yeah, yeah, a couple of big ones there. I I must have voted for Batman 130. I must Batman literally falls from the moon. It's it sounds insane and yet I was reading it and I was like, yeah, of course he's fine. It was the most comic book shit ever. Uh truly amazing. It's in that fail safe arc which I also love. Uh I definitely voted Batman 130 for this. What's crazy is I was just listening to last year's docs and there's just to kind of remind myself how it was going to go. And we talked about it last year during that episode about this insane moment of Batman falling from the moon right. and using his trunks to protect his face in the atmosphere and stuff. Because because it we by the time we were recording we were into the next uh, Doxner's qualifier. Yeah, the yeah. The, ep- the issue literally came out like the day we recorded the episode yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, truly, truly wild. But yeah, I mean, I think that says something for the strength of the moment that it, uh, you know, this is a thing that happens with the Oscars and the Emmys and stuff like that. If you come out too early in the qualifying period, you sometimes get lost in the noise. But that one cut through, and I, I voted for that one at least. Um, I think I voted for God Bleeds from Do a Powerbomb. You're which, a big Do a Powerbomb guy. You love that. that. That series is so good. Um, I read that series before I got into watching wrestling. I kind of want to go back and read it right. again now that I watch wrestling regularly. <laughs> right. You might appreciate it even more now. Yeah. Um, but it's a great moment where you think the story's going to end in issue six. And it's like, oh, no, they have to go to issue seven and literally wrestle God. Love and it. it's this great moment where no one's ever, like, beaten God and they make him bleed. And it's just like, oh! That's perfect. I love that. Uh, all right. who Who is our winner? So with 29% of the vote. So Whoa, this one was real, close. Real split category. Batman falling from the freaking moon has won this category. My boy, my my sweet boy, my precious boy. Uh, I'm so proud of him. He did it. He start, Again, like, started on the moon. If you shoot <laughs> for the moon and if you fall all the way to Earth, you can still you better win not miss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, amazing. Batman 130 in the fail safe arc. Love that. Great moment. It's yeah, I mean I can't even complain about it. That moment is so good and um like it or 
not, the rest of the Zdarsky run hasn't lived up to it, I think. Because how do you live up to falling from the fucking moon? <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, it, I... I really, I really like that book in general. I, I think the story has been really good, but it is hard to outdo that particular moment. It's, it's a real shining star. So, and yeah, I, that's I awesome. think I saw an interview with Zadarsky where he was talking about that moment, and apparently he like checked with like actual scientists and stuff. And it was like, look, I know it's a comic book, but we want to make it at least believable. <laughs> I, I mean, just even the idea of that is so funny. I love that. Uh, all right, what's our next category? So we had the best moment. Now we must talk about the best reveal. That's right. A big twist, a big reveal. Uh, this is uh, not necessarily most comic booky moment, but the kind of uh, the biggest sort of shock or, uh, or or things like that. And there were. A few good shocks this year, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, just going to throw out one that didn't make it on the list. Uh, that moment at the end of Batman 900 where you see the Zernars of the multiverse. Yeah. Which is which is kind of finally paying off in Batman, by the way. It's so, true. That's right. Thank God. Yeah. yeah I, <laughs> but like that reveal of just like the Batman, the Batman of Zernar of the multiverse, you're like, oh. <laughs> very, very cool stuff is happening in, in Batman right now. Absolutely. Uh, okay. Who are our nominees then? Yeah. So instead of talking about things that didn't get nominated, let's talk about things that did get nominated. Um, so for nominations for the best comic reveal, we have. Amanda Waller is going to hunt down the heroes from Dark Crisis number seven. Yeah. The sidekicks are still alive from Stargirl, the Lost Children. Right. Cyborg Superman is the mastermind from Action Comics 1054. Boy Thunder is Magog from Batman and Superman, World's Finest number 10. And... Wait, it's the Transformers universe from Void Rivals number one. Yeah, I. Uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. I I I think the big ones from you know the Waller reveal is was it's big, but also it's taking a very long time to to do anything with it and. And Dark Crisis Seven because it was so early in this cycle. Now we've had times that like if that just happened, I'd be like, I'm excited. What's Waller gonna do? But it's been so long and it still hasn't really paid off yet. Um, I love so that at the end of like uh, Night Terrors, there's just this moment where Waller's like, and I'm still here. And you're like, what are you doing though? Yeah, I kind of like that Waller in the comics right now is like phase two Thanos, where it's just like, <laughs> it's like, all right, man, like, let's do it. <laughs> like, come on, get to it. So, uh, so that's a little funny. I almost certainly voted for Boy Thunder as Magog. Uh, you know, Batman Superman has been, uh, or World's Finest, has been an amazing book. And uh, I probably should have seen it coming, but Mark Wade invoking Kingdom Come and all this kind of stuff. Uh, I I loved that reveal, and I, I I think I yeah I think it's all been paying off really nicely. But that particular reveal is huge. It, you're right. Like it feels like a reveal you should have seen coming because like even to the point that if you look at solicits, the solicits didn't spoil it, but literally the next issue on the cover says "Thy Kingdom Come," and you're like. How did I not see this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, that's um, definitely what I voted for. What did you vote for in this category? I think I also voted for that one because I remember that one being the big freak out moment for me. Sure, um, yeah. I do want to throw out one to Transformers. It's the Transformers universe from Roid Rivals, though, right. because that kind of transcended past comic books, where it was like, hey, did you know the Transformers license got sold? And Robert Kirkman, like, stealth bought it and has now launched this universe. <laughs> yeah, that, I, I mean, like, that was pretty... That caused, like, actual ripples. Like, there were sort of, like, shockwaves through the online discourse of, like, holy shit, Transformers is... What happened? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So, like, do at least want to throw out a mention to that one? Because, like, that was kind of a big deal when it happened. Absolutely. Um, but the winner with 60% of the vote 
is that Boy Thunder is Magog. Wow, 60%. That's definitive. I mean, we've had some oh, yeah. categories so far, but not here. Uh, yeah, if you're not reading Batman Superman World's Finest, do yourself a favor and get that. If it's if you can only afford one D- book from DC, I would get that one. Yeah, I mean, the art is always impeccable, thanks to Dan Mora. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Mark Wade is maybe the best comic book writer that we don't give enough credit to. And and that book is the entire DC universe in in one title. It's it's great. You'll see a bunch of favorite characters. You'll see a bunch of long lost ones. You'll see some cool new ideas. Uh, yeah, the, and that reveal is just awesome. So yeah, nice. All right, moving on. What's next? Moving on to the best single issue. So those issues that can maybe tell a full story in one issue, or just is something special that you haven't really seen before. Right. Okay, so, best single issue, all right. The best single issues of 2023, the nominees. Action Comics 1050 by Tom Taylor, Joshua Williamson, Philip Kennedy Johnson, Clayton Henry, Nick Dragoda, and Mike Perkins. Right. Do a Powerbomb 7 by Daniel Warren Johnson. Wonder Woman 1 by Tom King and Daniel Sam. Sampierre. Sampieri. I've been saying Samperi, but that might be wrong too. I have no idea. <laughs> Fantastic Four issue seven, which was also issue seven hundred according to legacy numbering, mm. by Ryan North and Iban Coelho. Okay. And Batman one thirty five, which was also nine hundred according to legacy numbering, by Chip Zdarsky, Mike Cawthorn, Jorge Jimenez. And Mikhail Yan. Okay. So, Hanin. yeah, Hanin. Yeah, Mikhail Hanin. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. I remember too late. I feel like that was a hang up last year, too. <laughs> uh, that was a hang up in year one, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah some, some good single issues in here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of what I would have what I would have voted for. I might have... Sorry, it's Batman 130? Or it was 135? 135, which is also 900. Right, that's the 900 issue. It's the multiversal issue, which was awesome to read, where he just, like, gets to meet, like, Batman 89, and he meets Kevin Conroy twice, because he meets Batman Beyond and Arkham City. And um, he meets Adam West and gets his utility belt, and... DKR that, gives him a new hand. That is it is a crazy issue. I think though I probably voted for Action 1050 for this one. I, I was I was into that. I'm pretty sure 1050 is the start of the Metallo arc. It's and, uh, actually before the start of the Metallo arc. Uh Action 1050 is so we mentioned it previous. It's the issue with Lex Luthor where he kills oh, Manchester right. yes. Black yeah, 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 to yeah. restore the identity. And again, just has some great just Superman versus Lex stuff in that issue where like Lex has a reverse signal watch. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I think I voted for that one. Do you remember what you voted for? I feel like I'm going to be a Marvel guy. So I voted for Fantastic Four. Um, issue 700 was a Doctor Doom story. And it's just kind of Doctor Doom being like, I have a time machine. Why do I ever lose? <laughs> I mean, and like you're a, exploring you're a, that idea. <laughs> you're as much of a doom head as you are a cyborg Superman guy. Oh think, yeah, right. So that's right. That sounds right up your alley. Yeah, it's it's literally doom going. I have a time machine. How can I ever actually lose? And like he starts exploring it. There's this insane moment that I love, and I've referenced a bunch where Doom goes. So the only answers are that there is a god. And he has destined me to fail. But that would mean that God exists. So it can't be that one. <laughs> right. Yeah, I do. That's, that feels like very authentic doom. <laughs> it's great. I love that. But the winner with 40% of the vote. And I was definitely about to close this tab before saying the winner. But I I didn't. The winner with 40% is 
Action Comics 1050. Hey, nice. Amazing. I love it when Superman gets some love. I think it's easy to yeah. cast him off as just the one that's always there. But he's, you know, I think he could be a little bit like uh, like Leo DiCaprio. Where it's like, oh, like he's always good. We'll get, we'll get him eventually. It's like, give him his award, goddammit. So, well <laughs> done, everybody. Give it Action 1050 uh, the nod there. A story with repercussions also, because that's the issue where Perry has his uh, seizure. Yeah, yeah, you know, big, big repercussions in general through through that uh, that issue. But yeah, great art, really fun storytelling, just a just a really solid issue all around. All right, so we will be moving on to the best first issue of 2023 now. Right, it's all number ones, baby. All number ones, lots of creative teams, fun stuff. Names right. I can generally pronounce. <laughs> well, let's not count our chickens. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at one. I'm not counting my chickens. <laughs> All right. Who are the nominees for best number one? All right. So the nominees, we have Transformers by Daniel Warren Johnson. How did I spell Daniel wrong? And nobody <laughs> said shit. All right. Moving on. Uh, Birds of Prey by Kelly Thompson and Leonardo Romero. Nice. Shazam by Mark Wade and Dan Mora. Mm -hmm. Flash by Cy Superior and Mike Diodato. And Wonder Woman by Tom King and Daniel Sampierre. By the way, I just want to throw it out there. That even though you said Cy Spurrier's name wrong, I liked the way you said it. You said Superior, and I think he would like it too. Yeah, you know what? It's Fair enough. Solid. Everyone knows who I meant. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Um, yeah, I mean, a bunch of good number ones. I actually thought this was a really difficult category because I liked a bunch of these for different reasons and kind of putting them up against each other uh, even more than some other categories kind of felt like apples and oranges to me a little bit. Um, I, I had a hard time with this one. Um, I think ultimately I went with, uh, I think ultimately I might have actually gone with Shazam, uh, oh. which surprised me a little bit. But uh, But I think it's just that, you know, like overall, I think maybe The Flash is a stronger title, but I don't know that the number one got me the way that the Shazam number one did. You know, there's a good hook and stuff like that. Like, the, the craft behind that first issue of Shazam is really strong. So I think that's the way that I went on this one. So, uh, as much as I like Transformers by Daniil, as I have written in this poll, Warren Johnson, um, I think I voted for Birds of Prey, because Birds right. of Prey was incredible. Um, I love Big Barda and Cassandra Kane just being the most wholesome pairing ever <laughs> yeah. in a comic book. They're great. Um, I, I like I like that they brought Zealot in. I, I like including yeah. the Wildstorm characters. I think that's fun. Yeah, I was into that. Yeah, just, so love that book. Um, but the winner with 38% of the vote was Wonder Woman by Tom King. Wow. Tom King, a sort of historically divisive figure uh, on the show and in the community in general. Um, I, I think I do think that that number one is very strong. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised, though. I You know, you, you'd think maybe uh, you're kind of like superstar Wade and Mora team or the fact that The Flash has been like consistently one of the best books for like three four years or whatever even with other teams you, you would you'd think maybe one of those would take it but yeah impressive that's that's great i, I love that i think it's just interesting because it's tom king and like yeah. you think people would be hesitant because last ongoing was batman like he hasn't had an ongoing series since batman yeah and i like his batman run and i'm saying that <laughs> yeah yeah, and I, 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 I'm not gonna lie. I, I don't know that this is wholly justified, but I was just nervous about him writing Wonder Woman because, you know, we've we've had a really good run of including more women on the Wonder Woman title, and the I think the last time that Wonder Woman just had a dude writing was Steve Orlando, maybe. Um, I I know Michael Conrad was writing on, it, but he wasn't the only writer. 
Um, You're right. But uh, it might have been Steve Orlando, but Steve Orlando's got a very, like, kind of queer, inclusive sort of approach. Maybe the the one before that was, like, Azarello or something like that. Like, oh, it, I, yeah. I think there was just something in my gut that was – and it's not that I think Tom King is, like, a dirtbag or something. I just – something in my gut, I was like, I don't know. But it's a really strong number one. That's a great one to win. I love it. I'm 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 really enjoying that book so far. So yeah, really cool win there. I'm also quite enjoying that book. Um, I was a little concerned reading issue one. I'm like, oh shit, is this going to be like a stealth um, steel Sarge steel? I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. Is this yeah. going to be a stealth him book? And it's like, nah, it's a Wonder Woman book. It's good. <laughs> but like bringing in the Wildstorm characters, like, yeah, bring in some goddamn Charlton characters. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah really strong. <laughs> so moving on, we have the best short story of 2023. So these might be backups or these might be uh, might be just one piece of an anthology uh, a, a book or something that came out. So uh, just for those listening at home, if you're like, what do you mean short story? We're not talking about arcs necessarily. We're just talking about kind of smaller, uh, smaller pieces than that. Right. So as normal, five nominations. Let's run through them. We have The Hole in the Skull of the World from Detective Comics 1074 by Dan Waters and Hayden Sherman. Mm -hmm. Panic at the Parade from Action Comics 1058 by Greg Hahn and Travis Mercer. We Just Have to Make It to Spring from DC Legion of Bloom by... Oh my god. <laughs> Dave Why Wellgaz? Wellgaz? And Riley R Ross... Rosmo. Riley Rosmo, yeah. 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 Uh, Love's Lightning Heart from DC Pride 2023 by Grant Morrison and Hayden Sherman, which is the second time that he's appeared on the special story mm -hmm. list, by the way, Hayden Sherman. Um, and Don't Come to Central City from Flash 800 by Jeremy Adams and Fernando. Um. Yeah, for this one, I'll I'll come right out and say it. I voted for the one that I nominated that managed to actually make it to this list, which is the hole in the skull of the world. That's the Ten-Eyed Man backup, uh, like short story. That I I think Detective Comics, like right now, Rom V's on there. The art is amazing. Like we're doing this big, operatic, enormous story that's been going for like a year and a half already, or something like that. And, and I, I think for something like this, like a sort of end of year awards thing, I think to its detriment, it's playing such a long game that individual things don't necessarily jump out the same way. But like, it's full of amazing backups. The whole arc of this thing is so big in scope, but it's also so personal. We've got this kind of old world thing and like werewolves and like, kind of old Eastern European magic kind of stuff is, is part of this. And like, uh, it feels like a classic monster movie or like Dracula's come to town kind of like as a vibe. I think when it's all done, this is going to be one of the all time, like seminal detective comics runs. But I think until it's all done, everyone's just kind of going like beat to beat. And we're not really like shining a spotlight on any one individual issue. Really? But I loved this Ten-Eyed Man <laughs> backup. Ten-Eyed Man has been sort of vaguely implicated in the background of this thing. And um, I just thought it was a really, like, a really cool uh, interpretation of the character. A character that is historically very dumb or silly or whatever. I, I, I thought it was really cool. So that's the one that I voted for. I don't know what, what you did for this category. So is the Ten-Eyed Man thing... Um... Well, it must be because it's the same writer. So is this continuing from like Arkham City Order of the World? That miniseries that came out? Um, I didn't read that, so I don't know. <laughs> I I have lim I have limited room for like uh like infinite Batman titles, so I just get a couple of things and I catch up on other stuff later, but I haven't read that one. Yeah, I just looked it up. It's the same um 
I said Dan Waters wrote the short story, right? I think so. Yeah, so it's the same writer, and I know Tenai Man was like a main character in that Order of the World. So and it probably I guess is. if you or, liked that backup, you should check out that miniseries. Yeah, even if they're not like explicitly connected, I, I got to imagine that a lot of elements or vibes of it are probably carried over. Yeah, and I remember that miniseries being a lot of fun. Like I think Azriel is one of the main characters also in it, and he looks Listen, dope lo- as hell. I love Azriel too, so I can get behind that. Um, I think I voted for the one I nominated, which was We Just Have to Make It to Spring, which is this Superman story with, I think it's him and Swamp Thing. Mm -hmm. It's just this nice little story of you just got to get to spring. And it's like, oh, okay, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty cute. uh, Pretty cute story. Uh, All right. Who who won? Who took this? So the winner with 47% of the vote is Love's Lightning Heart by grant morrison this story is the one that resurrected um the red racer who died sort of in like unceremoniously in the multiplicity arc of superman back during rebirth so red okay. racer is the flash of earth 36 who's in a, a a really lovely queer relationship with that world's green lantern uh flashlight and red racer basically Barry Allen uh, themselves to rebuild the Ultima Thule in just this random Superman arc. And people were like, Red Racer was on, uh, was like in uh, Multiversity, was in like these other things. Like, why would we just kill a cool queer speedster like that? And uh, Love's Lightning Heart brings Red Racer back, as I recall. Um, So I could see why people really like that one. That's awesome, then. Yeah. Here I was being a cynic and thinking, oh, they saw Grant Morrison. I guess that's why they voted for it. No, I'm pre- I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure that is the story with Flashlight and it, they bring back Red Racer, yeah. Well, that's awesome, then. Look yeah. at me being an asshole for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next category. What do we got? Best original graphic novel. Right, so, so this is a full contained graphic novel, not a series of issues collected as a trade. It's also kind of one shot ish. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, we didn't say and one shot, but eh, two one shots kind of got nominated. Yes, yeah, so some. Yes, yeah, it's also where we stick some one shots as well. Yeah. Um, this was the category that literally got added at the last minute last year. Yeah, so I, it's nice that it's a full category this year. Yeah, and I, I think the one shots make sense as a home there because the, it, can, putting them, even though some of them are number ones, putting them in the number ones isn't the right like spirit for that category. So this right. is sort of just like contained, uh, contained storytelling here. Right. So without further ado, nominated was Monica by Daniel Klaus. Batman, One Bad Day, Reja Ghoul, by Tom Taylor and Ivan Rice. Right. Captain America, The Ghost Army, by Alan Gratz and Brent Sh- Ooh, Shru- Shronover? Shronover? Shronover. Batman, One Bad Day, Catwoman, by G. Willow Wilson and Jamie McCleave. McCleave? Mm -hmm. And It's Lonely at the Center of the Earth by Zoe? Zoe? Zoe. Zoe? There's no Y, though. Yeah. Is this the first time you're seeing names? (laughs) (laughs) It might be. (laughs) Most Zoes are spelt Z-O-E. What? (laughs) Yeah. All right, well, Zoe Thorogood. The American education system is really failing us. It's lonely at the center of this Zoom call. That's where it's lonely. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I think I voted for uh, It's Lonely at the Center of the Earth. Really beautiful story. One that I will will give credit where credit is due. Uh, uh, listener and and patron and uh, doc scordy and chris chan put me on to uh that story that book uh really really solid uh beautiful great art 
It's yeah, it's just great all around. I, I voted for that one. I think I voted for the one bad day Catwoman because I really liked that one. I don't have a particular reason. I don't particularly even remember it, but it struck a chord enough that I nominated it, so I must have liked it. <laughs> a lot of those one bad day ones are actually pretty strong. I, I really liked the Riddler one. I think the Rachel Ghoul one is great. I liked um I also liked the Bane one. I thought that was a really strong uh strong one too. So I'm really bad at picking up stuff from my comic shop and I just picked up all of them because even though I've I read them, I hadn't actually bought them from my pull list yet. And I was disappointed to see the Bane one wasn't there. So I'm going to have to rec rectify that here soon. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. All right. Well, who took it? So with 33.33, probably repeating percent of the vote, Batman, one bad day, Catwoman has won the poll. Whoa, whoa, just squeaked by. Love that. Love some love for Selena Kyle, for Catwoman. Uh, yeah, again, those one bad day one shots are almost entirely pretty solid. Like Almost all of them are great in some way. The Penguin one's really good, too. Um, yeah. But uh, the only one that I didn't feel strongly about was the Two-Face one. Yeah, the Two-Face one is I I liked it, but it definitely doesn't stick in my head the way some of the other ones did. I really like that Riddler one. I really like the Rachel Ghoul one. Yeah, I think dope. the problem with the Two Face one is it tried to like be in continuity, where yeah, that was a slave where the rest one. of them were just like, here's this fun like story, and like it's it's you know they compared them to the Killing Joke when they were coming out. It's like here's a trade you could just hand someone and they could read it and like get why you like this villain. Yeah, except for the Two Face one, you had to know all this other continuity for it. <laughs> yeah, it, it did seem a little heavier that way. That's true. Yeah. At any rate. Really cool one shots all around. So yeah, congrats, Catwoman. Love it. So moving on to the best mini series of 2023. Best mini series. So this is uh, uh generally um under twelve issues. Um uh start, middle, and end. Uh, uh not necessarily a series that was canceled, but one that was planned this way. Um, for the most part. Um, for the most part. Although we, we could argue that, you know, I'm just gonna say it right now, Nice House on the Lake might have been canceled early and they yeah. had to wrap it up quickly. True. True. <laughs> so yeah. let's so let's start there. Nice so the nominees. The Nice House on the Lake by James Tynan the Fourth. Oh my god. Wait, why is his name on it twice? Who made these polls? Whoever does this should be fired. Yeah, yeah. Al, I want to talk to management. <laughs> Alvaro Martinez Bueno and himself again. Like, why did I list that name twice? I'm not sure, but moving on. <sighs> God damn it. <laughs> Superman Space Age by Mark Russell and Mike Alred. Peacemaker Tries Hard by Kyle Starks and Steve Pugh. Do a Powerbomb by Daniel Warren Johnson, which I spelled the name right there. Don't know why I didn't spell it right in the other one. And then Eight Billion Genies by Charles Soule and Ryan Brown. I'm just going to assume the E is silent. Uh, yeah, a really, really kind of strong field here. Uh, books in a variety of kind of different tones and styles, uh, you know, from pure horror, the nice house on the lake to sort of raunchy R rated kind of thing. Like peacemaker tries hard, uh, to something Which... like really kind of like touching and indie and, and, and really kind of esoteric, like 8 billion genies. We sort of like kind of, we run the gamut through this category, uh, I'll tell you right now, I voted for 8 Billion Genies. That book, uh, we read it during prescribed reading month, and I was, like, so into it. I think, actually, when we read it, only issues 1 <laughs> to 7 were out, and I was so into it, I was so upset that issue 8 wasn't out yet. 
Um, but, but that <laughs> I was, was a, just about to say, didn't you read it before the finale? I was did, out? which is like a, such a. Ins- I mean, it's this podcast. It's exactly the way we would do it. But um, did you ever go back and read? Oh the yeah, finale? oh, oh I, I okay. finished it. It was beautiful, and I cried. Uh, I I voted for eight billion genies. Yeah. Um, I voted for no surprise to a power bomb. We already mentioned how much I love that book. Mm-hmm. Um, I do want to throw out. I do just want to mention quick Peacemaker tries hard though. Sure. Because if you liked that show and you didn't read this book, you're missing out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, th- this this book is 100% in the tone and spirit of the show. Even down to the fact that Peacemaker is drawn as John Cena. It, yeah, like... E- it's, even down to that. He's living and, in his shitty so RV. Much fun. All the, like, pieces of the show are in there. If you if you like weird comic references, they they bring in uh, the Red Bee, a, like weird Golden Age uh, superhero. There's all sorts of fun stuff in that book. Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely worth the read too. Yeah, just want to throw that one out. You know, every year I try to at least highlight one thing that maybe people haven't talked about as much as I think they should. So totally. I'll, I'll make Peacemaker tries hard the thing that I be like, hey, read that. I love that. All right, um, that's the winner with 43 percent of the vote do a power bomb whoa whoa you've got some converts uh-huh. you you're you're constant talking about do a power bomb has has tipped the scales people are reading it people are liking it i want to point out i'm not alone in my crusade uh cosmic dm definitely also on this yeah. crusade of this book being incredible i love in it. the docs cord I love that. Amazing. Wow. Do a power bomb best mini series. That's great. I Have you that. read this one yet, Doc? I haven't. I haven't. It's just the seven issues, right? Like it's, it's just seven issues. Yeah, I'll if well, I'll, I'll see if I can find the the trade. Is it in trade right. yet? I it should be. Yeah. I'll I'll see if I can find that cuz uh yeah, I mean, you you sort of had me at they wrestle god. I'm, I'm into that. Yeah, it's so good! <laughs> That's the thing I like in all of the other things I like. I like that stuff in Supernatural. I like that stuff in His Dark Materials. Like, I, I love someone with just, like, under-equipped fighting God. So, I'm, I'm yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> I think you'll really like it. Plus, Daniel Warren Johnson. It's hard to go wrong with... That's true. D-dubs. <laughs> That's true. Uh, what's our next category? The best story arc of 2023, oh in fact. Oh, my God. So we're talking about serialized comics. Uh, best story arc. Uh, who are our nominees? Our nominees. The Rise of Metallo from Action Comics 1051 to 1056 right. by Philip Kennedy Johnson, Rafa Sandova, and Max Raynor. Nice. Failsafe from Batman 125 to 130 by Chip Zdarsky and Jorge Jimenez. Elementary from Batman Superman World's Finest issues 13 through 17 by Mark Wade and Dan Mora. The One Minute War from Flash issues 790 to 796 and I think a special by Jeremy Adams, Roger Cruz, and a bunch of other people. <laughs> yeah. And then Joker Inc. from Batman Incorporated, issues 8 through 12 by Ed Brisson, John Timms, and a bunch of other people. They made sure these books got out on time. <laughs> yeah, baby. Um, yeah, interesting. Um, I'm pretty sure, even though I love Failsafe, and I think it's an incredible arc, I actually think I voted for the Rise of Metallo. That um Whoa. That, that run on Action Comics, I got really into. I loved the how they the the humanizing that they did of John Corbin. I liked the Cyborg Superman reveal in that arc. I was into a lot of what was going on there and I loved the kind of like the implicating Metallo's family too, you know, like um, I, I, I thought that was really interesting. The thing with his, his sister, um, and, and, you know, exploring this, like the beginnings of like this whole super corp thing and this new relationship to Lex Luthor with Superman and 
Well, that, that was more in the Superman book than the action comic book, I, to be fair. I know, I know, but I just, I love the context of all of that kind of seeping, seeping in a little bit. But, um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the, that's the one for me. I, I think there was some cool horror moments, some good, like, Superman being, you know, uh, I think that's, that's the arc where Superman says something to, um, to new Superman, uh, to the effect yep. of like w we help them because if we don't, they'll always be like this. Like new Superman is like, why would you help someone that's done this to your family or whatever? And it's like because I think it's something like, why don't you kill him even? And it's it like because if be that he, and, and yeah, and because if we response, kill him, he can never be better. Yeah, or he'll something. never he'll never be better if we do that. And I it's that is such a Superman moment. And I was wondering, I was like, holy shit! If I saw that in a movie, I would cry. Like yeah, uh, it it was really really strong. So I actually think I voted for that. I mean, you know, your boy loves Cyborg Superman, one of the greatest villains ever created. But your boy definitely voted for Failsafe. All right, because yeah, sure. holy I love shit. that we totally just like swapped coats for that one. We <laughs> like <laughs> amazing. Look, Failsafe was great. All right, the return of Zernar, which blew my mind. Uh, the fall from the moon. Superman in the Justice League just falling to this robot. The, th the thing that's kind of crazy about Failsafe is how it is a sequel to both Tower of Babel and Batman R.I.P. <laughs> and, uh, and what's crazy is what's crazy is um, Zdarsky starts his run and brings back Zern R, which is a concept I most associate with Morrison. And meanwhile, over in Detective Comics, Ram V's like, oh, and Barbados is back, which yeah. is again a concept I associate with Morrison. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, the Barbato stuff that's happening in Detective Comics, especially if you just, like, were, you wouldn't think that would be in there at all. And you certainly wouldn't think that they'd have the relationship that they have in that book given uh, death metal and metal and, like, everything that's happened with uh, Barbato uh, since. But, yeah, re some really cool reclamation of like interesting but insane concepts in the batman myth which i love yeah so i guess if you like batman r.i.p you're eating well this year yeah yeah vindication for the r.i.p stands <laughs> and the winner with 30 37 percent of the vote the rise of metallo hey I love that. I love it when people love Superman. This is two now. Woo! Yeah! Big year for and Superman. And you know what? Just want to throw it out. Superman won this category last year also, because last year was the World War Saga. <laughs> oh, yeah. War World. Yeah. Holy shit. Wow. Superman's really... Yeah, you know what? It is Superman's time. I love it. It is. <laughs> I love And that. Nicholas Holt is gonna kill him. It'll be great. <laughs> Man, I'm so, I, I'm so excited for that cast, especially Rachel Brosnahan. She's going to be like the sassiest 50s version of Lois. I, I can't <laughs> I can't wait. It's going to be great. Um, all right. That was best arc. What's our next category? Uh, I think this is your favorite category, Doc. It's best event. <laughs> best event. I do kind of live for events. That's true. Um, I'm, I'm a real, just, I'm a, I'm a real sucker for throw everything we have at this. Just going to say now, I don't think this was a very strong year for events. I agree. I, I agree. And I'll go one step further and say the events that were the best this year were kind of the quieter ones. Yeah. Um, it's a, it was a weird, a weird event year. I would say. Yeah. Well, Let's talk about them, I guess. Wow. <laughs> the nominee. I wish, I wish real awards shows had this kind of energy. <laughs> Look, all right, at the beginning of the show, I said some of these weren't the best. This was the category I'm talking about. All right. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll, I'll admit, it's, it's not the strongest I've seen this category over the three years <laughs> we've done this. <laughs> so the nominees. The Gotham War by Chip Zdarsky, Teeny Howard, Jorge Jimenez, Nico DeLon, De, De Leon, DeLon, whatever, and Mike Cawthorn. Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths by Joshua Williamson and Daniel Sampierre. Night Terrors by Joshua Williamson and Howard Porter. Lazarus Planet, an event I forgot happened 
by Mark Wade, Jean Luen Yang, Rico Ricardo Federici, and Billy Tan. And The Sins of Sinister by Kieran Gillen, Al Ewing, Cy Superior. I'm just going to go with it. Bite me. Lucas Wernick, Paco Medina, Patch. What the fuck is that? Zercher? And Alessandro Viti. Have you never heard of Patch Zercher before? <laughs> Have you? Yes. <laughs> I blocked him on Twitter because he kept trying to be like, there are good people on both sides. <laughs> what? Uh, uh, I guess fuck that guy then. Uh, moving on. I can't remember what it was about. It, it wasn't It wasn't necessarily the worst thing in the world, but I, I just didn't like him. And it was my Twitter account, and so I blocked him, and I could do what I, mean, I want. And now I'm not even on Twitter, even, so. I was about to say, do you even still look at Twitter? Oh, no, not at all. Not at all. Blue sky? I'll say... <laughs> I'll say right away, I did not read Sins of Sinister, but you were listing names off, and with the exception of Patch Zercher that I have complicated feelings about, I was like, that one should probably win. Because I'm assuming it's still part of the Krakoan era of X-Men and stuff, and like Kieran Gillen and Al Ewing on it. Like, I'm like, I, I'm kind of in. I like Cy Spurrier too. Like, all of that stuff, I was like, that one kind of sounds like it should win. <laughs> Uh, I didn't vote for it, but that's what definitely what I'm <laughs> thinking of. Uh, what did you vote for before I just go ahead and spoil it? <laughs> I I actually think I voted for Lazarus Planet. Um, <gasps> a weird kind of patchwork event, but generally interesting. I also, so... I, I liked Night Terrors, but it ultimately was kind of just like nothing. Although in a way that's sort of nice too. It's nice to just go in, all the books do tie in things for a couple of months and then you just leave and it's not like, and what is the world like now? Like it is kind of nice to just do a diversion. And so I was toying with voting for night terrors because some of the individual things in that were actually a lot of fun. Um, but I went with Lazarus planet um, just because I, I did like some of the stuff that it set up and there were some repercussions for it. You know, we're, just getting into the power girl book now but power girl even being implicated at all and stuff like that yeah so different people getting powers i don't know i thought it was a little bit interesting it probably didn't uh didn't do as much as it could have but compared to like the kind of like dark crisis seven or dark crisis as an event was kind of deflated a little bit as it went on um i might and, argue and it Goth never played to begin War with Gotham War has an interesting idea, like probably the most interesting idea behind it, but it kind of only works in the context of the, this ongoing Batman arc where like every, in each arc, Batman loses something of himself. Uh, and, I, but I yeah. feel like of all of these, I have the most complicated feelings about Gotham War okay, where yeah. like some of it I really liked yeah. and some of it I'm like, this feels vastly out of character for everyone in this scene right now. Sure, right, right, right. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. Um, but yeah, I think I voted Lazarus Planet, which was a slight So I'm a pretty sure I voted take. Sinister Sinister because sure. I didn't feel strongly about any of these other events. And at least Sins of Sinister was good. Right. And it set up like the next part of the Krakoan era and stuff. Uh, so with 36% of the votes, Sins of Sinister did win. Hey, nice. I mean, listen, I, I'm, I'm so far behind, but everything that I have read of the Krakoan era of X-Men, I've really been into. So it's not a surprise for me that something else from that would also work. And again, you know, some of the creators listed as part of that. It's like, not a surprise, really, at all. Right. No, it, it's, it honestly is great. Um, a weird look into the future where it jumps like, I think it's 10 years, 100 years, 1,000 years into the future. Right. Didn't they do the reverse of that near the beginning of the Krakoan era? Uh, Hawks and Pox kind of did like yeah they like they they did a kind 100, of hundred thousand or they were doing it with uh with what's her face because she kept uh, reliving things it was more Moira like that. Yeah, yeah Moira thank you yeah what's her face her X Men name um, yeah you know that total X Men character that's 
now a villain and one of the worst people in the Hulk or Cohen era? Question mark? <laughs> Who the fuck knows? <laughs> They're all, right. all bad. That was best event. Or no, sorry. That was just who we voted for. Who actually won? I said since the Oh, okay, long. good. 36%. I thought we were still just talking about it because you, you said you liked it. Good. No, good I, Love that. Yeah, I won. <laughs> quick, so quick, quick, on. quick, move on so we don't have to think about these events anymore. <laughs> Best ongoing series! Hey, nice. good series came out this year. Nice. I love it. Some great series. And and I, I don't think people are, are talking about it enough, but it's actually like a really fun era of DC right now, too. Uh, specifically there's lots of different characters there's lots of different tones of books there's some really fun ones some kind of silly ones you know fire and ice welcome to smallville is a lot of fun uh you know i i think it started a bit last year we had things like one star squadron and stuff like that but it's not that there aren't still a million batman books but there are now also a lot more other books as well uh so i i I think i think we're in a a much more fun kind of era of of dc uh batman superman world's finest does a lot of heavy lifting on that front too but (laughs) well speaking of it the nominees (laughs) batman superman world's finest by mark wade and dan mora (laughs) action comics by philip kennedy johnson and various artists nightwing by tom taylor and bruno redondo ice cream man by w maxwell prince and martin Marazzo. Marazzo. And Poison Ivy by G. Willow Wilson and various artists. Yeah. Hey, look, look at that. No fully Batman books on this list. You know, Batman Superman World's Finest. That's half Batman. Nightwing and Poison Ivy reference Batman, but no fully Batman book. L- listen, I, I think I've said this on the show before, but my position on it is I, I know some people will be like, look how many Batman books there are, and then they'll throw like Robin or Nightwing or Poison Ivy or Harley or something in that category. It's like, you're not reading these books then if you're counting yeah. some of these as Batman books. They're like resolutely not, you know, like fine, the characters are connected, but tonally and story-wise they're doing such different things it's like you're to count them as batman books is disingenuous batman superman world's finest is is in there too because i mean really batman and superman are just there to serve as like and they're always in the episode but basically like it's uh it's sort of like justice league unlimited style where like arc to arc and even issue to issue it's like who else can we bring in and we've had like metamorpho and amazo and yeah like the earth 22 the you know the kingdom come uh stuff and supergirl they had the issue where supergirl and robin go on a date and like all these different (laughs) kind of things have been happening so yeah really fun era at dc i think i um i almost certainly voted for world's finest i think it's um it's the entire dc universe in in one book it's got an amazing fun tone it's do it's also you know mark wade is so good at just like dipping into the lore and grabbing a thing and pulling it back out and i i uh i really love that because i'm a lore whore so uh, i definitely voted for that one i also definitely voted for batman superman world's finest uh you didn't mention it there's that great origin arc though where like they don't fight at the beginning of the arc where you're like, oh, it's the first time they're meeting. And it's just like, we're friends immediately because we're awesome. It's like, hell yeah. Yeah. It's, it's perfect. It's perfect. Now I just want to see their take on the, on the, the tentacle thing. Oh yeah, definitely. Hell yeah. Bring (laughs) back the tentacles. I have that issue somewhere. (laughs) Um, And the winner with 37% of the vote is Batman Superman World's Finest. This is, it's Superman's time, baby. It's happening. I love it. Yeah, great book. Like I've said al- already, if you're not reading it, do it. If you don't have a ton of room for budget for DC books, if you're more of a Marvel person or whatever, make room in your budget for Batman Superman World's Finest. Cancel something else and get that if it comes to <laughs> uh, You know? Uh, get that book it's great do it for the dan mora dan mora dan mora's art incredible amazing so moving on to the best writer of 2023 all right best writer 
Here we go. We have Zoe Thorogood, Daniel Warren Johnson, Chip Zdarsky, G. Willow Wilson, and Mark Wade. Oh, boy. I really liked stuff from all of these writers. Uh, this was a hard one to pick. I think I just went with my gut, and I, I went with Mark Wade because I also went with Batman Superman World's Finest as my favorite series, and Mark Wade is also, of course, he was implicated on Shazam, and he's he's just really present right now. But truly, any of these could win, and it would be a solid victory. Like, G. Willow Wilson's Poison Ivy is amazing. Um, it's Lonely at the Center of the Earth, Zoe Thurgood. Great. Chip Zdarsky's run on Batman has been, like, one of the best ones since Scott Snyder. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, any of any of these would make... And you didn't movie. mention my boy Daniel Warren Johnson, Warren but he's Johnson doing great, great things on Transformers. And he's doing, and he did great things in Dual Powerball. Absolutely, and like, a, and just a great writer. I just haven't read either of those. <laughs> uh, and Transformers literally has a scene where Optimus Prime suplexes Starscream, and is love the that. greatest thing I read in a comic book. Maybe didn't nominate for anything, but come on, <laughs> he suplexes one robot, suplexes another robot. <laughs> hey, I've got a, I got a question for you. What what does Optimus Prime say right before he finishes? I have no idea. Autobots pull out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wrong. I like it. Uh, <laughs> so, who's our winner for best writer? I don't know how I follow that. Uh, it's Mark Wade. He won with forty percent of the vote. Wow. <laughs> Pretty definitive, pretty solid, pretty solid win there. Yeah, yeah but did he, he think of Autobots pull out? I don't think so. No, Mark Wade, call me. <laughs> this and more. <laughs> so I'm behind never... every great writer, there is a great artist. So here are the best comic book artists of 2023. <laughs> That's right. All right. Who, who are our nominees? Just a few names I can't pronounce. Let's go. Uh, once again, Zoe Thorogood, Greg Smallwood, Dan Mora, Martin Morazzo, and Marika Mar Marcia Takara. Takara? Yeah. Um, um, Marcia Takara is uh, Poison Ivy. Uh, okay. Uh, Zoe Thorogood did the art on on um as well as writing for uh it's lonely at the center of the earth dan mora on a bunch of stuff shazam world's finest things like that uh world's finest teen tight no 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 not doing the art there but uh no he's not doing just, the art just on a bunch of things uh sorry who are the other ones again um greg smallwood oh, greg smallwood that's a human target uh, and then uh, Martin uh, Marazzo, that's Ice Cream Man, uh, mm, book, a book yeah. that I've loved uh, this year. Real, uh, real kind of great, creepy, uh, almost kind of Frank Quitely esque sort of art style. Uh, who did you vote for in this one? Dan Mora. Dan Mora. I mean, <laughs> really hard, hard to argue it. You know, I, I think the only argument you could levy at Dan Mora would be to say that he's you know, very mainstream, but he also does mainstream superhero art style better than almost anyone. Uh, really, like, wildly talented artist who manages to balance emotion and, like, kinetic action, bright, you know, like, the brightness, the vibrancy, the clean uh, lines and everything of what we think of when we think of comics. I, I mean, it's, it's sort of all done to, like, a perfectionist level and and that really elevates it even though it's quote kind of more in the mainstream right. as far as art styles go um also not for nothing the man can draw a great variant cover yeah which it's kind of got me thinking hey maybe next year we'll add another category you know best cover hmm? Inter i i fully support a best cover category absolutely i like that um i uh 
I I may also have voted Dan Mora. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wouldn't be surprised because with fifty nine percent of the vote, Dan Mora crushed it. All like right? I said, hard hard to argue. You know, everyone in that category did amazing work, but uh, yeah, Dan Mora is really he's really tapping in into something at least in the in the superhero genre. And uh, yeah, he's he's really like getting at something that people love. And again, the brightness, the vibrancy, the the cleanliness of the art style is really something. And so with that, that's all the comic book categories, which means you know what it's time for. The most important thing there is the podcast. Well, first the doc scored though. <laughs> Fine, them too. Also, thank you for paying. <laughs> uh, the doc, um, you know, we pimp it every year. Uh, the doc's court is awesome. Um, fan driven, fan created originally. Um, we just have a lot of fun there. We're starting movie clubs. So, yeah. you know, now's a great time to come in. We're going to start true. like watching movies and talking about them. We started doing book clubs regularly again, which, by the way, we're tapping you to lead one again here soon. <gasps> uh? I could do that. I could do that. I'm not the busiest man alive coming up. That's fine. <laughs> I'm not directing. Um, I'm not directing two plays, doing two yeah. podcasts with two Patreons, <laughs> and then a third other Patreon podcast. <laughs> and I have a full time job and a child. I'm fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, shit happens. Yeah. Lead a book club. <laughs> Things are good. Just don't be there when the straw breaks the camel's back. That's all I'm saying. Is, um... And the straw will be book club, goddammit. <laughs> but yes, the duck squirt is amazing. A big part of our uh, our fun doing the show is the community that uh, is sort of built up around us. So let's get into kind of podcast and podcast community awards here to, to wrap up the, the Doxners. What do, we, what do we got first here? So this is actually, I think, the only category that is not a full category this year. Okay. So the best Dox Cord moments. We have Personal Confessions January. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. That was uh, an impromptu theme month uh, on the Double Dose and also like spilled over onto Dox Cord and, uh, and our, our discussions over there. Honest Richard Sundays. <laughs> yep. Uh, during Challenge Month on uh, on Patreon, uh, uh, a couple of people really held Richard's feet to the fire on days where he was mandated to be honest. So, yeah, that was a good Doc Squared moment. And Cosmic DM begins and subsequently wins the Milk Wars. <laughs> yeah, Cosmic DM used uh, some sort of undue influence to affect the Fanagar Tournament of Pandering. And uh, uh, and Milk Wars ended up uh, winning, uh, which I wasn't upset about because I loved that book. Um, you but... could argue he also influenced Doc Miss because kind of led to Dairy Doc Miss. A hundred percent did. I decided it would be fun to drink gross milk during the Milk Wars episode, and then that is a directly inspired dairy doc miss so yeah i mean cosmic cosmic dm's influence can be felt like throughout the calendar year uh that way uh so yeah well, th and, those are those and I are think three part... strong doc scored moments i would say this year I, I can't speak for you obviously but i think part of the reason you might have felt obligated to drink that milk on that episode was one of the things cosmic dm kept saying during the milk wars was oh they're gonna chug a gallon of milk if we win this <laughs> Uh, yeah, which I never promised, but somehow I still chugged some. Uh, I'm, not quite, I'm not quite sure how he managed to get me to do that. Uh, I'm slightly concerned about how impressionable I might be. Um, but yeah, yeah, he's definitely exerting some sort of like some sort of influence. I don't know if he has like Bene Gesserit training or something like that, but he uh, he made it happen. He did. 
Uh, that's the one I voted for, by the way, was Cosmic TM winning the Milk War. I think I also voted for that one, actually. So what won and the best Doc Scored moment? With 56% of the vote, not only did Cosmic DM win the Milk War, he also won this poll. Wow, Cosmic DM taking home a Doxner. This is the highest honor we can bestow on a listener of the show. Huh. I guess that... Uh-huh. I guess that or letting you guest, I guess, but I don't, I'm not doing that unless you talk me into it. Then I probably will. <laughs> <laughs> All he has to do is make an elaborate award show, make everything of it happen. Yeah. And then once a year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you guys do all the work, I'll let almost anything happen on the show. (laughs) Make a Discord server, then use the influence in said Discord server to make an award show. Yeah, exactly. This is almost Uh, public. This is almost public access podcasting at this point. (laughs) Uh, All right, what's our next category? So the next category is a new category for this year. It's the best Golden Age episode of 2023. Yeah, we, we sort of shifted uh, shifted uh, the Golden Age tier a little bit. So now there are um, basically limited series podcasts that you can only get access to if you're at the Golden Age tier on Patreon. Uh, we started the year with uh, Toretto Talks. Um with uh which was me and my sister going through every fast and furious uh movie and uh, and talking about those and we're currently approaching the end of the the second series which is bonding time which is me and my wife um my wife sorry um uh going through every single james bond movie and uh, and ranking them and talking about them um and i think i said it somewhere in docmas or maybe on the the double dose but i'll say it again here for those who didn't uh, get the news but we're we're almost done uh with bonding time we're almost through the daniel craig uh, uh era of bonds i'm very busy for the next little bit but then in march when things open up a little bit the next series will start so there'll be a couple of months where um where there's not new uh new uh, installments of any of those series coming but then in March, uh, we'll be back up with a new one. Me and a uh, good friend and past guest of the show, Matt Poulter, uh, we're going to be rewatching all of the X Men films. Uh, that one's called Cerebros. So we're um, <laughs> we're we're doing we're doing that. So that's coming up. But yeah, those are those have been really fun for me to do is just rewatch movies that I enjoy and talk shit about them and stuff like that. So best Golden Age episode uh just just quick since i complained about um spider-verse i do want to point out part of the reason i was in a bad mood was fast x because that movie has a cliffhanger that is so fucking stupid see but fast x is half a movie a hundred percent half a movie oh my god that cliffhanger is so fucking stupid because like part of the fun of a cliffhanger is like oh like, how would I get out of this situation? And this one's just like, you don't. You just fucking die. Like, that's it. <laughs> I kind of love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely, it's no F9. We'll put it that way. But Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the two episodes nominated was Toretto Talk 7, which is Furious 7, or Bonding Time 11, which was Moonraker. Yeah, I just... I, I think the I think Toretto Talks Seven belongs in there because um, part of my shtick on Toretto Talks is I opened every episode with at least a segment of a parody song, a song unrelated to the movie that I would make a parody version to make it related to the movie. But for the Furious Seven episode, I rewrote the entirety of Tracy Chapman's Fast Car and made it about Brian. <laughs> um, so so I think that almost deserves it just for that um uh bonding time number 11 moonraker we had a blast talking about that one moonraker is by far the silliest bond movie it's definitely not yeah. the worst it's definitely not the best it's absolutely the dumbest uh and well. we, we had a blast like watching it 
it's it, it takes some insane swings. Jaws finds love. It's like it's a crazy movie. And yeah, we had a lot of fun talking about that one. So both solid episodes. I I probably voted for Toronto Talks though. I think is is Moonraker more insane than Die Another Day? That's arguable. <laughs> I I get where you're coming from. It's definitely more fun to watch than Die Another Day. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll be honest. I didn't vote in this one because I haven't listen to the golden age episodes in a while well i'm gonna cut that out obviously uh yeah yeah um I won't. It, honestly it's just because it's like it's that extra click of like oh go on patreon it's like but i don't wanna oh you lazy bastard <laughs> <laughs> all right well, i had to rewatch uh furious seven one 55 percent of the vote <laughs> Woo! yay my hard work on rewriting tracy chapman's fast car it paid off yeah Woo! you know what I- i'm not even gonna lie you've kind of sold me i think i'm gonna go listen to that episode. at least start with yeah. that one and i think you'll get the vibe like they're i they are i i actually am pretty proud of both of those podcasts i think they're really fun rewatch podcasts they're there is a sort of like standard format even between the two shows, but I do like this idea of having a different guest host for different franchises and just going through. So uh, I've been having a lot of fun with those. So yeah, if you haven't, if you've been too fucking lazy to go and listen to them so far, get off your ass and go sit somewhere else on your ass and open Patreon and listen. I don't, I don't want to tell you. I, I will. I will. You've sold me. <laughs> Song parodies are where I live. So, you know what? Let's go. <laughs> All right. What's what's up next? The best double dose of 2023. So, Silver Age tier on Patreon. This is our weekly bonus episode. Uh, there there have been some, some weird ones this year, I would say. I mean, last year got weird because, you know... Well, actually, I guess it was during this Doxner's cycle. There was the great... Yeah. Episode. The Great Richard disappearance of uh, of late 2022. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's been kind of like a weird Doxner's year for the Double Dose. I think there's some fun ones in there. Who are our nominees? Our nominees are episode 230, which is The Many Deaths of Lila Starr. Episode 228, which is Yokro's Fan Fiction. Episode 250, which is Challenge Month Kickoff. <laughs> episode 225, which is Quantum Mania, which we'll have to explain why it's nominated. <laughs> and episode 252, which is Doc versus the Machine. Yeah, it's interesting. Two Challenge Month episodes. Um, uh, a Prescribed Reading Month episode where we talked about the many deaths of Lila Star. Um, and then to the have fan a- fic- the which was one, incredible a ton of fun i really liked that one and that yeah quantum mania which you think is just us talking about quantum mania but really i think this one snuck in as a nominee because this is the episode where for some reason i revealed that i <laughs> i had taken a picture of my own shit and almost sent it to richard um <laughs> But you just wanted to see the man's dick. I mean... No, no. We're revising history. I offered to see his dick in exchange for giving him a picture of my shit. It's different. Yes. It's not what you said it was. <laughs> it's much weirder. Don't worry. Hey, man. I I guess you'll just have to go listen to the episode if you want to find out for yourself. Yeah, and if you were if you were like, wow, like episode like 250, 230 or whatever, you're like, yeah, there's over 260 weekly episodes of the double dose so in addition to over 400 episodes 420 (laughs) some odd episodes of the main feed and 20 something specials and six annual episodes there's also (laughs) there's also 260 some odd bonus episodes of that almost 25 episodes of bonding time 11 episodes of toretto talks get on the patreon give me your money god damn it yeah wait i don't get any money Give him no. your money. No, but you this the doctors are on the main feed. So. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> um, and the winner with thirty eight percent of the vote 
Reed versus the Machine. Whoa, the episode where uh, where Richard uh, pitted me against an AI chatbot to see who would be a better host for the show. Uh, specifically, ja- Chat GPT. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, that episode has a special place for me because I got to participate in making some of the questions. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> uh, I mean, that episode has a special place for me because, it, A, it was in the middle of Challenge Month, a thing that we just did for the first time this year. And, B, I won, which is the ultimate justification, I think, for my general position on uh, on uh, uh, ChatGPT. Uh, so, yeah, uh, yeah, get fucked, ChatGPT. You come for the king, you best not miss. Uh <laughs> <laughs> very very fun stuff though yeah. that episode's great honestly i just was re-listening to it today <laughs> i'm i'm also sort of glad that like the whole shit thing didn't get like immortalized with a win uh well yeah. it got second uh the... no no if you're, if you're not first you're last <laughs> <laughs> first loser first loser first loser <laughs> First Loser, the episode where I offered to look at Richard's dick if he would look at my shit. A, a preposterous proposal to make to somebody. Uh. So, moving on to our favorite moment from the main feed episodes in Ooh. 2023. All right. Favorite main feed moment from this past year. So, the moments are, hey, you guys had a live show at an Cool con. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Oh, hey, Richard went missing for two months. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Richard uses the first coupon and births. You know what? I'll let you say it. You do it so well. Yeah, yeah. Richard uses the first coupon and births May. <laughs> um, the ending of episode 368, which was uh, can can we sidebar for a second? Sidebar. Oh, oh and, that's what that was, right? The sidebar one. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with all the edit points and stuff, yeah. very funny shit. Yeah. And then Richard plays the Marvel card. Yeah, two coupon ones in here. So if, yeah, I mean, three of these are intrinsically connected. So uh, Richard disappeared uh, near the end of 2022 for a little bit. Uh, which is right at the start of the Doxner's cycle. So early in this Doxner's voting year, Richard disappeared because he was busy divorcing. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, That's a great way to say that. And uh, so there was like a series of like Josh Gill bombing into guest host. We had Jaffe on. I was like, what What are doubles I can record by myself? It was a truly chaotic uh, couple of months for the pod. And during Docmas, which we, I did record with Richard uh, that year, I had made a bunch of coupons uh, the way you might do in, like, couples therapy. By the way, a thing I've never made for my wife and that she was so angry that I was making for Richard. <laughs> um, so the, it was almost a double divorce year. Um, oh, and, shit. Uh, and yeah, uh, so I made these coupons. It was like, please come back. You can play these coupons that'll do ridiculous things to the show. And he proceeded to use, I think, four of the six over the past year. Um, so one of them was that he could unveto anything that I vetoed because occasionally we do cut stuff out of an episode if I feel really awful about it, which really <laughs> should tell you something about what gets cut out. Um, <laughs> and he. We had, yeah, we had invoked that community bit, you know, Chang going like, gay? And and Richard decided we should do a Pride Month and call it May? And I tried to <laughs> veto it, and he used the coupon, so I couldn't veto it. And we ended up with a full theme month because of it. Yeah. Um, which I, I think I did some of my best work in making it legitimate episodes. Um, right. <laughs> uh, so that was one. And then the other one was he played a coupon that turned the entire episode's worth of questions I had to only answer in Marvel. I couldn't talk about DC. Uh, Which okay. might be the ma- maddest I've ever been listening to a podcast, by it, the way. I mean, <laughs> it must have been so frustrating for people that like had their questions in there. But also, it must have been like slightly maddening that it 
wasn't a complete shit show. I was sort of proud of that episode in a weird yeah. way, but like for not knowing I'm that not gonna much, lie, that's part I, of the problem with it is I just wanted it to be complete garbage. And like yeah. it said you're like semi competent. And I'm like, I, for what someone the fuck that, is this? For someone that doesn't know too too much about Marvel, like I kept the lights on for one episode, so that was all right. Didn't um, mention Silver Surfer enough though. You, well, fair, but also, you know, I don't know what the fuck am I supposed to do. <laughs> Read Silver Surfer, obviously. Fine. Um, what did you vote for in this category? What was your favorite main feed moment? Um, my favorite is the ending of uh three eighty six or three sixty eight. I laughed so hard listening to that because the power dynamic shifts like four times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It it became every once in a while we'll latch on to a bit and it takes over the episode and the episode's no longer about whatever we were talking about. And I think that was, that was one of those moments and a pretty funny one too. Pretty good one. I think I voted for the great Richard disappearance because uh, <laughs> just wild shit. Like my favorite one, I think I cut it out of the main episode, but I put it in like the kind of rev like, I put it back in like a montage for the annual or whatever. It's just Jaffe going like, so is Richard just gone forever? Just like people, like nobody knew what was up. Everyone was asking questions. I was trying to be a good friend and not say anything. And I was like, oh, he's got stuff going on. Like just be yeah. super vague. I, I swear he's coming back. I had no idea. It was... That that was like you to me during the double last year. You're like, hey man, it's just gonna be me and you. Hope that's okay. <laughs> yeah. See, see, last year a big part of that was I can't overtax Richard. Doxners will just be me, me and Dad, right, <laughs> me and you. This year is just Richard decided Hawaii was more important. So yeah. this year is just <laughs> disdain. It's not a divorce <laughs> thing. The show's coming back in the new year. Uh, this year is just that Richard uh, is in Hawaii. You're right. Well, the winner with 46% of the vote is Richard playing that Marvel card. Yeah, pretty wild. I was pretty angry about that. I'm not going to lie because I was also pretty looking forward to answering some of those questions. <laughs> uh, you can kind of tell listening to the episode. Yeah, I was I was pretty pissed about that. But you reap what you sow. I did make those coupons for him, so. <laughs> you gonna make more coupons for him now that he's almost through the first batch there's gonna be a different version of that sort of thing for for next year i i've got i've got 2024 plans but i'm i'm waiting Ooh. to reveal some of them so all right and the final category we come to it at last the best main feed episode of 2023 all right best episode of the main feed, the main podcast of the year. What are our nominees? We have episode 327, a period piece, or period pieces. Right. Episode 387, The Milk Wars. Of course. Episode 389, this episode is normal. <laughs> That's the Marvel episode. That's the Marvel episode, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> episode 398 strange visitor from a strange planet yeah yeah that's the the yeah. george reeves superman episode forgot to put a parenthesis at the end of that one okay and episode 403 his hellish hate yeah that's the episode about atrocitus uh but i i, I it, that one made it in because the first i'd say eight minutes is just me trying to sing um, Christmas songs for Doctober and it going yeah. really poorly. Um, yeah, yeah, pretty funny in, though. Some interesting stuff in there. Is the period pieces episode? Is that where that could that can't be a Slam Bradley one? That that feels like that was years no ago. Idea. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting. I, I wasn't expecting a couple of these to make it on there. Um, I wasn't expecting the George Reeve one uh, to make it on there, although I did go back and listen to that episode. And there was <laughs> we were talking about that that story that everyone knows about George Reeve, where he's at the birthday party and the kid has a gun and he talks the kid down. 
And I was like, oh, I do a really good job of handling this story and uh, telling it nice. And I, right as I was thinking that, <laughs> I said, that George Reef goes, no, I'll show you how to kill me. <laughs> that, if anyone's going to kill me, I'll do it. Uh, <laughs> so, I, 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 yeah, I sort of uh, so ruined a nice moment there, but. Uh, what did you vote for for this? I'll I'll say right now, I didn't vote in this category because I wanted to see what would come out on top, and I didn't want. Uh, to I voted that. for the Milk Wars because that was such a movement on the Doc Scored. Like it's hard to really yeah. put into words that moment. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Yeah, that's the uh, a fan favorite moment. It's up there with the Flash enters the Speed Force, um... and Doc. <laughs> Picks up his shit with plastic bags. Hey, hey, but you know, people got to pay for that. <laughs> and the winner Ugh. with 46% of the votes. That episode was not normal, but it did win the poll. <laughs> Whoa, this episode is normal. That's the Marvel episode. Holy shit. A great yes, episode. I guess this means you need to do more Marvel episodes. I mean, the fans have voted. Get fucked. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Well, I'm glad that I'm glad that that major inconvenience was appreciated because that <laughs> that made me so angry. Uh, so I'm glad that it was listenable and enjoyable in any way at all. It's good. It's fun. It, we're having fun here. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, it, and. That's it. That's that's the third annual Doxners, baby. Ryan, this is this has been your baby for the last three years. Thank you so much for organizing all this, for getting the nominations in from the Dox scored, from getting the polls up, from tabulating the votes, for uh for you know uh, going back and rewatching and re-listening to stuff. Uh, thank you so much for that. Do you have Do you have any sort of uh, closing remarks as uh, as president of the uh, Doxner's uh, Foreign uh, uh, Academy Committee? Um, like I said, um, this is a blast every year. I have so much fun doing this, and this year, like I said, I was a little lazy and I delayed. But once I sat down and started going through it and started collecting people's stuff and going over everything. I just remembered how much fun this is. And I always have such a blast. It's something I always look forward to. The episode always comes out around my birthday. So it's like such a great little thing that I get to do. And I'm so glad I get to be part of it, honestly. Yeah, that it, it, it's awesome. Thank you so much for all your hard work on that. And thank you, everyone who is a patron and supports us through the year and who is just a listener and supports us that way through the year. Uh, you know, we're, we'll be back in the new year with new episodes. You know where to hit us up, Dr. DC Podcast on all of the services. You can email us at drdcpodcast at gmail.com. Get on that Patreon. You heard us talk about some of the fun stuff, the Doc Scored and the Double Dose episodes and those extra Golden Age rewatch podcasts. Uh, get over there. It's patreon.com slash drdc, $1, $5, $7 level. They all help to support us. Uh, and, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's it. This is the, this is the end of 2023. Uh, so, uh, hope everyone had a great Docmas. Happy holidays. Happy, uh, Docmica. Uh, 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 Ramadoc. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm, well, what are the other holidays at this time of year? <laughs> Happy holiday, folks. We hope whatever you celebrate, you're celebrating it well. Yeah. Doc holiday. Uh, God adios. damn it. <laughs> this was a Brain Freeze podcast. <laughs>